What's going on, y'all? So lit. Anyway, y'all, let me just tell y'all this. I had the best morning anyone can have in a long, long, long time. Okay? I got some good-ass news. Um, I'm in a good-ass mood. So, you know, I'm just feeling real good about life at this point. You know what I'm saying? I'll expand on it. Um more probably next week but i just got some things in the works that's going on and i am so happy about it so you know <laughs> and it came at the right time because bitch listen i'll tell y'all later but you know this is gonna be a fun review even if the reunion is dried out and boring or whatever the fuck we just gonna make it do do okay because that's what we do over here at this channel but anyway so this is love and hip-hop atlanta season seven um reunion part two okay and it picks up immediately where it left off at with spice and tommy going back and forth at each other and you know they had a little fight and basically tommy whole thing is don't disrespect me don't disrespect my peoples and then you know you uh supposed to be a jamaican pop star but you had to come to america on love and hip-hop <laughs> spice said bitch you've been on love and hip-hop for years and what the fuck happened with you what have you put out and to be quite honest there's a lot of people that's been on love and hip-hop and they're just solely based on love and hip-hop. Whatever it is that they claim that they need to do, they're not doing. They're not popping the way that they expected them to pop. Tommy ain't got that liquor out because she probably didn't drink it all. You know, she's still in denial about her liquor and stuff. And like Spice said, the problem with Tommy is she has people around her that's not going to tell her what she needs and the, the things that she really needs to do. Like her real friends are not telling her what's up. And the thing is, we see that Spice is the one that go ahead and say some stuff, okay? She call out the bullshit. So I can respect Spice on that point. Um, they talked about Tommy and the alcoholism. She's upset about how can somebody come in who don't even know me and tell me that I got an alcohol problem. Because, bitch, you do. We can clearly see it, okay? And if it ain't alcohol, bitch, it's drugs. If it ain't drugs, it's something mental, okay? Now, you can take a choice from all three of them, and you can chalk it up to which one it is and go get some fucking help. Tommy is still in denial and then going to say she hasn't had a drink in one month. And you the one that put yourself on the alcohol monitor? Okay, girl, if you say so. Moving on from that, they talked about the whole incident with Versace and her and her mom. I will say the mama looked nice. I do like her hair this time. They got that shit together, covered up all the spots and stuff. You know, she looked real nice. And she just said, bringing Versace to that photo shoot, she thought she can kill two birds with one stone. And I guess the stone just ricocheted and it went elsewhere. She just wanted her family back together. And I do appreciate the fact that Tommy did say, you know, to the young girls, you looking at this whole show and you seeing how I act towards my mom. It's just that it's not good to do that to your um, elders, but she's just, you know, that's the type of relationship that she was given, the respect that she was given throughout her life or whatever. So that's how they, she give it back. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm glad that she actually acknowledged that because I think we all was taken aback and kind of discussed the way that they was talking to each other and especially Tommy talking to her mom. Um, you know, she was talking about the pig, the pig, she said, ejaculated all over the place. And so she put the pig out and the mom was talking about her health issues and was saying she was at Coachella. She was drinking some alcohol and she felt some pain throughout her whole body. And she said she feels that same pain when she is in high stress levels or whatever. So I don't know exactly what it is that's going on with the mom, but she looks like she's doing a little bit better than she's been doing. So, you know, they get to talking about the whole Keeley situation with Sierra. Sierra and Shooter. Um, did Sierra go out and what was her role in trying to reach out to uh, Shooter after, you know, his son died? And he, she basically said Shooter kind of, you know, pushed her away, was blocking her. Um, she called and all that stuff. And we heard in the show that she said that, you know, his son was practically like a stepson to her, to which... Technically, he was, but, like, you know, he, she had respect and she loved the boy, too. And my whole thing is, I don't fault Sierra 
for just calling and all this stuff. If you're not answering the phone, I'm not going to just pop up and give you the wrong impression that, okay, I'm over here to, you know, help you out if you need anything. I'm not going to give you that wrong impression too because you're vulnerable at this moment because you're dealing with the loss of your son and think that, oh, this is your chance to get back in with me or I'm going to give you some pity sex or some shit like that. No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call you every day. I'm going to text you every day until you answer. I'm not just going to pop the fuck up okay because if that's what you want that's not what you're gonna get some of y'all may not agree but that's just how i work okay and for keely to open up her fucking miss piggly wiggly looking ass mouth okay and to say some shit about well she was not there and she was still up there in brosco she because she's still a married woman at the time and all this stuff bitch Shut the fuck up. Then you talking about this whole thing with the um pen throwing and sh uh, shooter wasn't there for it. And, you know, if she wanted to talk to me, she could have sat down and she could have talked to me, but she never came to me. Sierra said, bitch, I never wanted to talk to you. Kelly is delusional as fuck. You're not that important, okay? I don't understand what makes her, you know, and, and, and to try to flip it, you are a fucking woman. To try to flip that shit up on Sierra to make it put make it seem like she's 100% in fault and the blame for this whole relationship to um for falling apart and that she's supposed to still do her wifely duties being there and doing all this stuff and being a support system to a man who fucked around on her and I'm so glad Sierra said something about that so it's okay you get upset with me for not doing this but you're okay with the fact that this motherfucker fucked around on me had a baby on me and did all this other shit with me bitch shut the fuck up that's probably the life that she lived and that's her norm so that's why she okay with it and you want to know what the deal is she want to fuck shooter that's all that it is so you know they start talking about um brasco and his hoes and all this stuff and he's still up that line i'm done with sierra because sierra is stupid as fuck brasco they show a fucking clip first of all he's still denying that he did anything with amber then he said that he was messing around with joy but it was during the time where he really wasn't kicking it with um you know sierra like that and you know she was still going through the process of divorce keep that in mind then they showed a clip of him in a hotel room with Joy, they finna go fucking all this shit. And then, here goes Sierra. It's all to the good, you know what I'm saying? Because I can't really be mad because at the time, you know, me and him, me and Shooter wasn't even divorced yet. I haven't signed those divorce papers and all this stuff. But now that I'm divorced, you know, we can do what we do. And if he fuck up and all this shit, then I'm gonna be over it. You know, right now, we friends, we this, we that. I said, Sierra, you got to be the dumbest bitch ever. This motherfucker is cheating and all this shit on a relationship or at least didn't even tell y'all that y'all just dating and he dating around. He keeping secrets and shit about it. I'm so mad that they didn't play the clip when he was up there talking to Bachi about um how he got a look. He told Bachi first that he was fucking around on Sierra. That Sierra wasn't the only bitch that he was with. And this is after he told Sierra that he loved her. Like, come on. This is stupid. Sierra is stupid. Y'all like to let men run, on, uh, run around on you and that's why they do it you do but you say you don't want nobody cheating on you but you allow the shit to happen so it is what the fuck it is i'm just i'm i can't get my pressure up over some dumb shit it just would never would have been me and they also asked carly red did she you know what do she think that she was wrong for ambushing um sierra with those girls and she was like she come with receipts and even tokyo said carly red is a good person and she just her timing and delivery is off so they all cool they all fine so we get on Tokyo and Tobias, you know, uh, first of all, Tokyo, they was talking about you wouldn't let another bitch do your eyebrows or whatever when they talk about cheating and then comparing the barbers, niggas don't let other niggas do their hair and they be hiding out from their barber if they let somebody else do their hair. Shit like that. Let me just tell you something. Tokyo is a key. Okay. She is hilarious to me and I see why they got her on this show. Um, she is a good addition to it, just a bit, you know, I hope if she comes back for the next season, she has something more. I've seen that she's dating that Ferrari dude that got caught up in that China, Black China scandal back when she was with Rob or whatever. Girl, please don't give your pussy up to him, okay? Please don't do it, because he don't look like, he look like he got hoes, and he's a clout chaser and all that stuff. I just can't, but you know, niggas, and we gonna, y'all gonna do what y'all gonna do. But anyway... They talked about her relationship with Tobias. Tobias basically said, 
you know, she she a girl who got a little bit of weight to her, whatever. But, you know, it's her confidence. It's her confidence. Okay, and why you have to mention her weight? We see she a big bitch. She knows she a big bitch. We want to know what attracted you to her. What is it about her? You know, all you had to do was start that shit off and say, it's her confidence, the way that she carry herself, her personality. She's a lovable chick. You know, she's beautiful as fuck. She makes me laugh. See, you ain't had to. I ain't mentioned a bitch weight or nothing like that. I'm just saying. But, I mean, because we, it's obvious, all right? Um, so, they started talking about the relationship between Carly Red and Tobias and how she and Carly Red, they, on him and Carly Red met because he was in one of her videos. Jock made a little joke like, yeah, I seen that nigga on the set. And I was like, this nigga with them long arms and all this shit. Yeah, I knew something was going, going down or whatever. Keely get involved because she claims that Tobias was a liar, was trying to make it seem as if him and um, Tokyo was actually fucking around, and, you know, Tokyo was like, like, you a liar? Like, you claim that you break break artists and you ain't broke no artists yet? And I said, that is kind of true, because y'all be getting these producers and these artists on here, there ain't nobody heard before, okay? Um, so what exactly do you be breaking? Okay, and, you know... <laughs> They was going back and forth, and she was like, Tobias was my artist. It was like, I thought that was Blue Artist. Well, you know, she they she kind of worked on the label, too, whatever. Oh, like running and getting the errands and, you know, booking the place and stuff like that. Oh, okay, yeah. I said, girl, <laughs> that was funny to me. I don't know why, but it was. I just don't like Keely. Maybe that's why. And I, and I just like the little digs that everybody gives on her because ain't nobody really here for Keely, Okay. Then, you know, they get onto the whole thing with the Spice situation between Spice and Tokyo and her fat shaming and all that stuff. And, you know, Spice said that she didn't even know there was a thing called fat shaming. And to be quite honest, I'm not going to go so hard on Spice um, because she's she's because I did that throughout the season and she seemed to learn her lesson. Tokyo and her are cool. They made up. They're doing music together. And I seen that, um you know, earlier, too. And so. She was just saying, you know, where she comes from, it's a cultural difference. Somebody's always mentioning a way, especially if a guy says something about a fatty girl and fat this and fat that. It's not necessarily saying that you're a fat bitch, you know, but it's saying that you, um, they like that. And then Tokyo was like, it's just like when I say, hey, bitch, hey, bitch, you know, I'm saying that as a term, it's endearment. But you can tell what I'm saying. It's a difference when I'm saying, hey, bitch, because you a motherfucking bitch. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, I wasn't offended by what she said about my weight. It's just that she was disrespecting me. That's why I had to come at the bitch. And so after that, um, you know, that went down. And they all got that all together. And I know it's a cultural thing. And I say, I don't care. Okay. You know, you just don't. You, she tried to use that as an excuse, but knowing damn well she was using that to fat shame her. She probably didn't know what that term was, but she was using that to be shady, and she admitted that too. Okay, but they over the situation, so I'm over it too. So they get on this whole thing about the fight that happened at the dude ranch and all that bullshit, and trying to come down to what the fuck Carly was doing. Carly was getting upset at BK because of the things that he was saying. Sierra said she didn't approve of the stuff that he was saying, but was glad that he stood up for her. Tokyo said, bitch, if two bitches was trying to fight me and my nigga was standing right there and do shit, he would have been on the t-shirt the next day. That's what would have happened. And that's basically what BK was really doing. So we saying, you know, you getting in between women shit. He was just really, to be quite honest, trying to break up that whole thing and get them off of his girl. He wasn't trying to hurt them or nothing. But, you know, tempers got flirted and she got in the crossfires and he just started calling bitches a bitch. And some of them bitches needed to be called a bitch. So, you know, they figured that shit out. As the leader girl, you know, she's still harping about some shit about, you know, when they got into it with Carly and they threw the fruit tray and she said you know i'm still gonna get you and all this stuff or whatever you still harping on that but yet you were sitting down the day before kiki and hot laughing it up with sierra and all that shit and they said that it was like everybody was having a good time you know and then all of a sudden shit flipped and then now there is no um issue because it was all a miscommunication because Carly had to come out there and say, well, Sierra was only involved in the shit because she was trying to, you know, take up for me and have my back and shit like that. 
that was it. Okay, I said y'all harping over some bullshit from last year. Like, let that shit go. Okay, Estelita, you just wanted to jump in and think you was Escobar, uh, Pablo Escobar up in this bitch, and it just didn't work. Okay, nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. Um, nobody's rocking with you like that. So whatever. Then they get on this whole situation with Keely and her situation with um Bachi and how come you know she didn't say who the baby daddy was, and she tried to put Bachi on front and say. You know, it's not the fact that it was, uh, he didn't want to know who the baby daddy was. It was the fact that the baby daddy was blue and he probably was intimidated by blue. He said, first of fucking all, that ain't even a fucking case. I ain't intimidated by no motherfucking man. Okay. And blue even said, what me and you got going on, ain't got shit going on with me and about you. That's a cool dude or whatever the fuck, but I'm not finna be getting upset at no nigga over what me and you got going on. I said, shut that bitch down real quick. You know, when it comes to putting Keely in her place and she knows that she being put in her place, and this is why I don't 100% believe the story about um Blue not being there or not trying to be there for his son. I feel like she tried to, um you know, block him at some point because she's just sitting there steaming, you know, and you can see it in her face. You can see it in her face that people getting her ass together and she just has a very bitter spirit about her and I can feel that. But Blue is just all about his son and that's basically it. And then they talked about, you know, Mama D and her trying her new body, what she was going to show Nurse Bay, her cleavage and, you know, um, how they felt about what if they mother-in-law would have told the news before you did that you was pregnant? Erica was like, if it was Mama D, I wouldn't have cared. And Tokyo was like, shit, I ain't want them problems. And they asked Kurt, what if Miss Charlene would have came in the house and tried to redo it and all that stuff? He said, first of all, no, because that's not Charlene. And that basically was it with Mama D thing, you know? And my whole thing is, what the fuck was Mimi on here for? Mimi wasn't on... Mimi, they should have just gave Mimi a plate of food because they only asked her two things throughout this whole reunion. And she served no purpose, okay? But I guess after you done been through all these years of bullshit on this show, I mean, just sit back and let that shit ride and get a free fucking check for just showing your face. I mean, I can't hate on that unless you Erica. Because I honestly, what the fuck did she come on this show for? For what? We don't know. Then the episode, you know, ends with... A look back at some shit that happened, some funny shit, I guess. Sierra said she's never going um, horseback, horseback ride, riding. Uh, Sierra, what's that girl name? Erica Mina, can you hit us with a do re me? Do re me? Nah, nah, I can't. Okay, because we already knew you couldn't, but all right. Um, Rashida said they opening up a sports bar. Uh, Spice said she's staying in the A for a minute, trying to break out into the hip hop world. And, um, you know, Tokyo. Is Tobias the one? How do you know that? I mean, only time will tell. Is he the one that might take your virginity? I don't like these questions, okay? Like, that was a private and intimate question that we really didn't need to know the answer. She said, well, damn, bitch. If she do, you know, I'm going to post a pickle on Instagram. And that was basically it. I'm so glad it was only two part. It could have just been one. But I felt like this year's Love and Hip Hop reunion, just like the season, was pointless. And um, they need to do better. But y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.